What's up everybody, Gen X Dividend Investor here. So the last few days have had some nice up market days that you don't see too often. So I thought I could leverage that fact to share some data that is valuable for investors to intimately understand. I actually think it's more useful to share when my portfolio drops a lot, like I did two months ago in my video called Portfolio Down $50,000 Today and Why I Don't Sell, because it doesn't seem like people share their losses enough. That being said, if you know me or my channel, then you know that I'm not someone who shows this information to brag, but instead I share my portfolio to show what is possible if you stay true to a buy and hold investing strategy, and hopefully inspire you and give you the emotional fortitude to stick with investing when things go south, which I promise you they'll periodically do. My channel is focused on dividend growth investing, which is the main strategy I've settled on while investing for over 25 years. Now the reality is I wasn't planning on making this video until a subscriber on my Discord named Charlie said, you're going to have to make a video on how much you made today, just like the video you made when you lost 50k. I responded to his message by saying that my gains or losses are only on paper, which means they aren't real until you actually sell. Then a Patreon champion supporter of mine named Frank Malarsik added to our conversation by sharing one of Discord's fun hold memes. Frank is a freshman at college and he just started a new YouTube channel where he's documenting his journey through investing and programming, so if either of those topics interest you then check out his channel as I'm sure he'd appreciate that. Anyway, in this video I'm going to show you how my decent sized dividend portfolio can fluctuate significantly on a daily basis and I'll tell you why this particular increase upset me, but more importantly I'll show you the data that explains why buy and hold investors should stay invested rather than jump in and out of the markets, and finally I'll end this video with a story that will make you reflect on who you are as a person. So I recommend you watch this entire video and please consider hitting the thumbs up button, subscribing if you haven't yet, and click that bell notification. Let's jump into my portfolio. Feel free to take a screenshot and look over all my positions or watch one of my other videos where I go over my portfolio in detail. You can see that at the time I'm writing this script, my market value of my dividend portfolio is about 1.76 million and that I yield $51,637,000 a year of dividends as I've purposely built a portfolio that has a very conservative 3% yield which lets me sleep well at night. Someone the other day asked me why I don't just go in 10% yield stocks so I could be getting $175,000 a year of dividends, and I had to explain that I wouldn't be able to sleep at night with that sort of average weighted portfolio yield. I'd be too stressed at that level of risk, which yield often indicates. That's also why when someone says they are making a certain amount of dividend income a year, I find it less useful than when they tell me their total portfolio value as well. If you just build a portfolio for the highest dividend income, I'd be very concerned about your portfolio. It's like if you redline your car at 8k RPMs every time you drive. In the short run you'll go faster, but then your engine will explode. My daily portfolio change column shows how much each individual position went up or down on that day. So you can see that it starts with Apple and that position is up $1,895 to a total of around $208,000 of Apple stock. And then we see Microsoft was slightly down by $543 in the portfolio, leaving me with about $176,000 of Microsoft stock. And then across all 25 of my positions, I was up 3% when I did this, which is about $51,000. What's interesting is not the amount, but the fact that we have kept trending up. Yet if we rewind back a few days, there were a slew of people that were sure the market would crumble if a particular party won the election. There were another bunch of people who were sure COVID would put us into a depression like the world has never seen before. Of course, anything is possible and thus we could enter into a COVID-induced depression like the world has never experienced, but I'll still stick with a simple buy and hold strategy. The key takeaway is to learn to ignore market predictions, by me or by anyone, because no one knows what the future will bring, even when they feel very confident in the predictions. If anyone could consistently time the market and actually put their money where their mouth was, there'd be a trillionaire. I've noticed that the same people who confidently predict the future tend to be the ones that only tell you about their good calls they make and rarely, if ever, share their losses. So here's some data from a study Fidelity did where they wondered how much of an impact it would be to someone's portfolio if they missed some of the big up market days. This says if you had invested $10,000 in 1980 and you had been in the market every day, your portfolio would have grown to $708,000. Unfortunately, at that time I was under 10 years old. If you had just missed five of the best growth days, your portfolio would only have grown to $458,000. Think about how insane that is. You lose out on about 40% of your gains by not being in the market for five specific days out of 40 years. Let me say that again so it really sinks in. If you had been in the market for the last 40 years, but you had missed the five biggest market up days, then your portfolio value would be 40% smaller. If you had missed the best 10 days over that 40 year period, your portfolio would be less than half of what it could be. And if you missed the best 50 days, your portfolio would be less than a tenth of what it could be. So the point is that you can't time the market, and if you miss any big up days, it severely, severely eats into your total gains. Now I saw a great quote from the simpledollar.com that said, Another good reason to stay invested is that the majority of the best stock market days throughout history have come in the midst of significant market downturns. 
Of the top 10 biggest gaining days, six occurred during the chaos of the early 2000s tech bust or the 2008 Great Recession. Even though it can be hard, it's crucial to avoid panic selling when the market struggles. As the saying goes, it's all about time in the markets, not timing the markets. Consider getting that tattoo so you never forget it. So why am I upset that my portfolio is going up? Well, it means that most of my stocks are getting more expensive, and in my popular video I just did called my $1.7 million dividend portfolio, where I did a summary video for all my subscribers to quickly come up to speed on who I am, how I made my money, how I think others could duplicate what I've done, etc. I mentioned that I'm planning to dump a bunch of cash into my dividend portfolio once some plans of mine hopefully come to fruition, which aren't guaranteed will happen, but regardless, it's annoying to see your stocks keep flying up when you want to do a big buy. I'd much rather see red 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 before a big buy. I also mentioned that I plan to add a new dividend stock to my portfolio once I do those big lump sum buys, which I plan to record so you can see me literally executing buy orders of multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars in my E-Trade account. Of course, normally I prefer the markets to keep trending up. But doesn't it always seem like things go up when you want them to go down and they go down when you want them to go up? The market is a fickle mistress. Okay, this chart from Fidelity shows you that normally when the market seems terrible is at the exact time when you should really invest the most. Of course, past performance is no guarantee of future performance. If I were a better investor, like a Buffett, I would sit on cash for years, maybe decades, until things were at an absolute steal, then I'd jump in. But instead I tend to invest lump sums when I come to the cash, and that strategy has worked out for me over the decades, even if it's not perfect. So this data says that the five years after the Great Depression of 1932 brought an astonishing 367% stock market return. The same is true for other periods when the stock market had been dropping, such as in 1982, 1994, and 2009. So from this data, one should consider investing when everything seems like it's absolute crap, because as Harvey Dent and Batman said, the night is darkest just before the dawn. That's what's nice about having a simple consistent strategy of just keep buying, always investing more into your portfolio. If the market is up or down, you don't care, you just keep plodding along forward. Now I want to end this video with a story I found online that I think you'll like. The story is about how you react to adversity in life. Once upon a time, a daughter complained to her father that her life was miserable and that she didn't know how she was going to make it. She was tired of fighting and struggling all the time. It seemed just as one problem was solved, another one soon followed. Her father, a chef, took her to the kitchen. He filled three pots with water and placed each one on a high fire. Once the three pots began to boil, he placed potatoes in one pot, eggs in the second pot, and ground coffee beans in the third pot. He let them sit and boil without saying a word to his daughter. The daughter moaned and impatiently waited, wondering what he was doing. After 20 minutes, he turned off the burners. He took the potatoes out of the pot and placed them in a bowl. He pulled the boiled eggs out and placed them in a bowl. And then he ladled the coffee out and placed it in a cup. Turning to her, he asked, Daughter, what do you see? Potatoes, eggs, and coffee, she hastily replied. Look closer, he said, and touched the potatoes. She didn't notice that they were soft. He then asked her to take an egg and break it. After pulling off the shell, she observed the hard-boiled egg. Finally, he asked her to sip the coffee. Its rich aroma brought a smile to her face. Father, what does this mean? she asked. He then explained that the potatoes, the eggs, and coffee beans had each faced the same adversity, the boiling water. However, each one reacted differently. The potato went in strong, hard, and unrelenting, but in boiling water it became soft and weak. The egg was fragile, with the thin outer shell protecting its liquid interior until it was put into the boiling water. Then the inside of the egg became hard. However, the ground coffee beans were unique. After they were exposed to the boiling water, they changed the water and created something new. Which are you, he asked his daughter. When adversity knocks on your door, how do you respond? Are you a potato, an egg, or a coffee bean? Moral of the story? In life, things happen around us, things happen to us, but the only thing that truly matters is what happens within us. Which one are you? Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Leave me a comment if you did, I'd really appreciate it. These videos take a lot of time and energy for me to create, so please consider hitting the thumbs up button, subscribing if you haven't yet, and click that bell notification. And please join my Dividend Discord server and come chat with me and thousands of other investors. Thanks, and I'll talk to you again real soon. I am not a financial advisor, and these videos are for entertainment, inspiration, and educational purposes only. Investing of any kind involves risk. I am only sharing my opinion with no guarantee of gains or losses on investments.